All right, in today's video, we're going to go over spoons, how to fish them, why trout like them, go over rods and reels, all the stuff I use, and all the techniques I use to uh, get them trout to bite. So let's see how we do. guys here's some of the uh, lures or uh, spoons we're going to be talking about and uh, the techniques I'm going to show you work well with with all of these but uh, you got your your old standby Thomas Boyance, Castmasters, uh, Super Duper and a Phoebe these are uh, pretty old school but they still work uh, but mainly I'm going to be talking about how to fish these uh, RHA spoons and then uh, a lot of these techniques will also work well with spinners like your rooster tails and your panther martins. Um, the biggest thing, or I guess the biggest mistake a lot of us make when fishing uh, lures like this is just to throw it out and retrieve and not really give it any action. But it's the action that really provokes the bite. So if the thing's coming back in a straight line, you may get some followers, you may not necessarily get a bite. But if you do a pause or a little twitch, something to make the, uh, the trout feel like that that uh, bait fish they're chasing is, is injured uh, and weak, that is what will provoke the bite and that's what we're going to try and do and uh, that's what i'm going to show you now some of you may or may not know i am a uh, pro staffer for uh, rha tackle uh, luke hit me up and uh, showed me a spoons and I, I really hadn't fished a lot of spoons uh, over my past fishing days and uh, i saw the colors and and just fell in love with them and uh, started fishing them and man was i hooking up trout now I've only been fishing them since May, and as you guys know, that's kind of the end of our season down here for trout and SoCal. But I have been hooking up trout all through summer on these spoons. Uh, now these uh, these spoons are not meant to replace anything, even though I, I fish them a lot. Uh, I still drop shot, and I still uh, throw mini jigs, and I still do bait and weight. These are just another tool in the toolbox. It's just a really good tool. So here's a, a short reel I put together on uh, uh, some of the catches and hookups I've had uh, on the RHA spoons just since May. And this isn't all of them. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. All right, on to uh, rods and reels. Uh, for your rod, you want an ultralight again, because again, this is this is trout, and these these spoons are not uh, super heavy. Um, but you want what what's called a fast action rod uh, instead of a moderate. At least I do. Um, you may actually end up wanting a moderate, uh, but uh, the difference between a, a fast action and a moderate fast is a little bit stiffer. Uh, your moderate action has a little bit more whip at the tip. So uh, I like I like a moderate action rod for throwing mini jigs, if that helps explain it. Um, as the uh, the fast action rods are just a little bit stiffer, even though they are in the ultralight uh, platform. Um, so the rods I use are uh, Phoenix Elixirs, and uh, I have two of them. Uh, this one you guys have uh, seen before, I'm sure, if you watch the videos. This is uh, this is Buffy the Trout Slayer. Um, I use this also for drop shot. I really like this rod for drop shot, but it is, it is just as good for uh, uh, throwing these spoons or throwing uh, uh, spinners. The, uh, the Phoenix Elixir is, is uh, kind of a workhorse. It can do anything. You can do bait and weight. It can throw mini jigs, uh, spoons, lures, and it can do the drop shot. So um, if you were going to buy one rod, or if I only had one rod to choose and was stranded on a desert island, it would be an Elixir if I was going after trout. <clears throat> the reel I have paired on, on Buffy here 
is a uh, Shimano Stratic CI4. Uh, they don't make these anymore, but uh, uh, they replace it with uh, the Shimano Vanford, and I'll show you that one in a minute. And the, the changes are minimal. I think they put some, some sealants in there so water doesn't get in there as much, and they change the gearing slightly. Um, but essentially, it's the same reel. Um, the biggest thing using this, this Phoenix Elixir is, is, as you guys know, if you watch the channel, I, uh, uh, I fish a lot of budget fishing rods. Like uh, I've fished for years, and I didn't spend a bunch of money on rods because I never needed to. Like To me, 40 or 50 bucks was uh, plenty to spend on a rod. Um, the Phoenix rods, these elixirs are about 200 bucks, but once I started fishing it, uh, to me, it's worth every penny. The sensitivity on these things, uh, is unbelievable. I can feel extremely light bites when I'm working a spoon or, or working the drop shot that I wasn't able to fish before. Like, uh, as you know, watching my videos, the, I use a lot of steady cams or constant cams to catch hookups. And I was looking back at old hookups on uh, drop shotting, and you can see the fish bite. You can see my rod bend because I was using a moderate action rod. And uh, since I got the elixir, uh, my hookups, it looks like I'm a ninja, like I'm psychic, and I'm just popping that thing so fast because I'm feeling more of the activity at the end of the line. Uh, so uh, I can't recommend these highly enough, but other rods, like the rods I started off with, are 40, 50 bucks, will do the job. Uh, but if you got the money and you want to make an investment and really get into this, I definitely recommend the Elixir. Well, I'll show you my other one. My other Elixir is a split grip. And this is Willow. And the only difference is it's got the split grip on here. Same exact action, same size, same everything. Just the split grip is different. And this one I paired with a, uh, with a Vanford which is just basically the upgraded model of the, uh, the CI4, which is essentially the same reel. <clears throat> now, as far as your line, I run, uh, for the most part, a uh, five pound Runkle fluorocarbon. Uh, Runkle, if you don't know, is, is a very thin line. Uh, so the diameter of the five pound is closer to like a three. It's very thin and because uh, it's fluorocarbon, it's uh, near invisible to the fish. So that's a, a perfect line for that. And you don't have to use Runkle line. Uh, you can use any, any line you want, fluorocarbon, mono, whatever you like. You can get away with a little bit of uh, visibility on the line because obviously this is a moving lure, so the trout don't have time to really inspect it. It's more of a reactionary bite when they're chasing it and they're behind it, they're not in front of it, so usually they aren't gonna see the line. Uh, I recommend you, you go at least with a four pound. Uh, some guys will fish two pound with these. Uh, I don't. Uh, it's it's just I, I don't uh, uh, trust two pound. Uh, I'm not personally, I don't think, a good enough fisherman to be successful all the time with two pound. And, and uh, I don't want to risk losing my spoons all the time. Like even if I make an arid cast, you're going to snap that line and that spoon's going to be gone. So um, I recommend staying around a four pound. Um, P line, uh, Iser line, uh, uh, the Ber even the Berkeley Vanish is decent. Uh, a lot of your monos and uh, fluorocarbons are just fine. So um, some guys even go up to, to six, eight pound braid and tie on a little bit of a leader um, in fluorocarbon. So uh, uh, whatever you want usually will work good. I'm just giving you some suggestions as far as what I do. Another great yield uh, reel to use is a uh, uh, Daiwa uh, Legalis. Um, this is an excellent reel. Um, to me, it's just as good as, as the Vanford or the CI4. The only difference with this one is it's uh, just a little bit heavier. I got the Vanford and the CI4 because of their weight, basically, because I, I really got it into uh, fishing lures and drop shotting. And when you're doing that for eight hours standing up, you get tired, and any little bit of weight you can shave off is a big deal, at least to me. Um, this reel is outstanding. Um, but it's a it's just a hair heavier um, and it's a lot cheaper this is only about a sixty sixty dollar reel the vanford and the ci4 well when they still made the ci4 they're a little over 200 bucks so they are spendy uh but they're excellent reels but you can definitely get the job done with a with a legalis and this is a great great reel now something on uh, uh again on sensitivity when you're working a spoon as opposed to uh, a, say a drop shot 
uh, when you're working a drop shot, those of you that have done it, when you're working your lure in or you got it on a pause and you feel a bite and you go to set the hook and there's nothing there, you're pretty much done. Um, I've never had uh, on the drop shot where I've missed a bite and stopped it and kept working it and the fish came back for a second chance. Uh, I, at least I can't remember a time that happened. And I've caught a bunch of fish on drop shot. It just doesn't happen. When you're fishing spoons, it's much different. Um, you may feel a bite. If you're not hooked up, keep going. Just don't change your, your, your pattern. Keep doing what you're doing because many, many times they come back for a second and a third time and then I get them. Uh, you'll feel a little tap, keep going, maybe another little tap. So you know he's chasing it, just keep working it the way you were and then boom, he's on there. So th that's real important to make that distinction. And also it's very important when you're talking about sensitivity with your rod. So you can feel all that going on so you know what's happening and you know there's a fish behind it even though you can't see it. So that's very important to remember. All right, guys, now that we've uh, talked about line, I'm going to show you how I attach these to, uh, to the end of my line, basically. Um, I use these uh, dual lock snaps. This is size 0. It's a size 1. Uh, I usually don't go above a, a size 2. Um, but the dual lock snaps are... Uh, really good because I got this bull nose at the end and that gives the the spoon a lot of room to move around without binding it up so let me show you here as you can see it has lots of side to side it can even do almost 360s but you don't want it to do that because you basically just want to do this but this doesn't impede its movement at all and uh, so far, it hasn't uh, harmed at all my, my hookup ratio or anything like that. The trout don't seem to notice this clip. Now, you can also uh, go with a, uh, a swivel snap as long as it has one of these, uh, these bull nose ends. Uh, the only issue I have with this is it's another thing to get hung up if you have the swivel on there. And this shouldn't... Uh, uh, twist your line because the way you're supposed to fish these if it's spinning you're not doing it right you're going too fast it just needs to go side to side like this that's all it does so if you're reeling up and you're using one of these dual lock snaps here and you're getting a lot of line twist um, you're going too fast so that's why I really like the dual locks because uh, it helps keep you honest so to speak uh, so you know all the time you're working your lure right um, these uh swivels if you're going to troll these like these can be trolled very well um i would use a uh, uh, swivel for sure because uh you aren't bringing it up every cast it's out in the water for a while and if it's if it's spinning and you're going too fast you aren't going to know it and this could really twist up your line if you're on the troll with these and don't have a, a swivel to get your speed right Okay, now we're going to talk about why would we use lures or spoons to uh, fish for trout. And the answer is that uh, trout, like almost all fish, are predators. Uh, trout are predators on a much smaller scale, and they're also prey. As you know, uh, lots of bigger fish like stripers, uh, largemouth bass and such will eat smaller trout. But trout, on the same hand, will eat other smaller fish, little frogs, bugs obviously, and flies and any other uh, aquatic small mammals that are that are in the water that they can make a quick meal out of. So basically what a spoon imitates is a, is a wounded fish. When you're fishing the spoon at the right speeds, which I'll show you later, it's just supposed to wobble side to side real slow. So it just looks like a fish that's, that's kind of half swimming, not really doing a great job. And uh, when you give it a little action, like pause it or give it a, a couple little taps now and then, it makes the trout think that there's something wrong with that fish and they'll go in for the kill. So the best way to understand how a trout uh, can see the spoon and can feel the spoon's vibration is to uh, look at their anatomy. And here's a slide that uh, shows the trout and you can see in the front of the slide there's uh, its nose or what's called its nares but that's how it smells. So that's why we use scent on our lures. Uh, the eyes, obviously, that's self-explanatory. From what I understand, trout have really good vision. 
which is also why we use very light line or fluorocarbon line so they can't see the line. <clears throat> but the most important thing when you're fishing spoons to me is the pink line right in the middle. And right where that all that pink is, uh, that's called the, the fish's lateral line. And the, uh, the lateral line allows them to, to swim and navigate when they can't see so good. Basically, it's, it's almost their sonar. And they can feel uh, changes in temperature, changes in water pressure. So they can absolutely feel the little thumps of a spoon coming through the water. And it gets their attention because it sounds like a wounded, uh, or feels to them like a wounded bait fish. So that's very important and that's why, um, I'm going to show you later why it's very important to keep our, our speed correct and get the most action out of our spoon that we possibly can. Because uh, if they don't see it, they definitely can feel it and they're going to start searching trying to find it. Okay, this next slide is important because I wanted to touch briefly on colors and uh, basically uh, color frequency and how it is in the, uh, in the water column. As uh, light shines down through the water, um, you can see colors, but it changes at different depths. And what the fish see is kind of how the, the water clarity and the light touches it, it may change the color of the lure, like a white lure may look green or, or so on. So here, this, this isn't gospel. This is just a chart to help out and gives you a good place to start because uh, one thing to remember is fish have a mind of their own and you could follow this thing to the T and then use some color that's off, uh, off of this and get all kinds of hookups. So it just depends. But this is a good foundation, let's call it. So in the first, first box, you got when it's sunny and, and you have clear water, um, things that are bright, chrome, metallic, uh, ghost, I think refers more to uh, plastics, like the clear plastics maybe with sparkles in it, uh, flashy and reflective, uh, cloudy and clear water. Uh, your whites, reds, that ghost uh, pattern again, uh, dark greens and dark natural colors, so your blacks probably. Sunny and stained, be chrome, metallic, flashy, uh, chartreuse and white, and cloudy and stained, white, chartreuse, black and blue, black, red, and purple. Um, I can say this is, this is, a lot of this is pretty accurate because um, I know early in the morning I use uh, when it's dark and a lot of the water out here is stained. Um, I'll, I'll usually do very good with Jawbreaker, which is a mostly white one, which I'll show you a little later. Um, and, uh, and your blacks too, like your real dark colors always seem to work good. So, and I know once the sun gets out middle of the day, usually I go to an orange, uh, yellow orange or a bright green. Uh, and those seem to work better, uh, when the sun's high. So, um, this is just to give you a base, a foundation. Um, when you're choosing colors and uh, uh, hopefully it'll help you get on to, uh, on some fish. All right, now let's move on to my favorite part of the video, the practical application. Let's get out to the lake and uh, start making some casts. We'll do a little fan casting, explain that, and uh, go over uh, how I work these things. Uh, pauses, pops, speeds, all that stuff. We'll get into that in the next segment. All right, I'm going to show you how to uh, do a little fan casting right here at Lundy Lake up in the Sierras. And uh, we have plenty of room, but basically we want to cover all the segments of water all through here, all the various depths we can cast to, short and long. So first cast, I usually like to go long. You don't have to, but I usually do. So we'll cast over here to the right. Tighten up our line. Let it drop. Lots of times you're going to get hit on the drop, so it's always good to, to give that a shot. You don't have to let it go all the way to the bottom because sometimes there's snags down there, so it's good to know the water um, and know what's out there because you're risking losing your spoons. <laughs> Once you're satisfied with that, start bringing it in nice and slow so you got a good bounce at the tip of the rod there. See that rod bouncing? And then you pause, and then you crank. And then pause and crank and what that does is as the spoon's going through its normal track sometimes the trout will follow it and they'll just look for it to do something and that pause gives it that little extra something that will give them an opportunity to strike now you can see the spoon coming in because it's super clear see that wobble that's what we want just a nice side to side wobble 
All right, now we're going to cast in the same area, but a short cast. Or shorter, went a little further than I wanted. And this one I'm not going to let drop. I'm just going to start cranking. So the idea is we're trying to cover all the columns of water and find out where the fish are. All right, nothing over there. So let's come a little bit more to the center. Go long. Tighten up your line, let it drop. Nothing, start my retrieve. Make sure I got a good bounce at the end of the rod. Do my pauses. And I'll bring it back in for time's sake. See, and if you go too fast, see how it's spinning? That's what you don't want. Let's go short. Little drop, because when you go shorter, it's shallower, so you don't have to let it drop as long. Bring it in, then we start working further to the left. And so on, same procedure, and we're just gonna cover every segment of water, every distance, and every depth, hopefully. And uh, that's basically how you fan cast. And then what we'll do is, don't get anything here, we'll move up, the shore and try over there and just keep doing that until you find them because these trout sometimes you know they school up and uh they cruise around but sometimes they'll uh they'll pick a spot and hang out for a little bit so uh you get one cast back in the same area maybe there's some more sitting there all right the first technique we're going to talk about is uh really my favorite and that's uh the reel and pause technique so let me show you real quick with this rod once you cast out you reel in and get your speed right so you get a good good pulse at the tip you, you actually be able to feel it it'll slowly be be popping side to side and your rod tip should bounce a little bit so while you're reeling you just do three or four cranks and pause three or four cranks and pause three or four cranks and pause and most of the time the fish will hit on the pause so I got some video footage of uh, this technique in action so let's take a look at it all right here we are out on a boat already made my cast and bringing in my uh, or starting my retrieve doing some slow cranks and pauses here so we crank crank pause crank crank pause and there fish is on and if you see he got it right at the end there right at the pause all right the next technique i want to show you is uh, real pop so you give it little pops same speed same everything except you're lifting the rod tip up so what you want to do is three or four cranks and then a light pop you don't want to pull it up too high because you also have to remember that when you're fishing with your rod tip up that's going to pull your spoon upwards and it's going to pull it out of the water column so lots of times I, I use this more when I'm fishing a little bit deeper water or if I'm just not getting any bites at all and I'll try to uh, just do something different and see if that works. Uh, but uh, it's something to be very mindful when you're doing this technique is, is eventually your spoon is going to surface and then you're just going to be dragging on top of the water. So sometimes what you can do too is you can reel, reel, reel and pop and then let it drop. Let it drop for a couple seconds and then reel, 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 pop. And then let it drop okay so here's some video uh, showing the technique in action all right doing my retrieve here now this one real nice slow retrieve and real light pops because I'm trying to keep that spoon down in the water column it's just real light pops until I get a hook up and there it is BAM all right now we're going to talk about the drop and uh, there I am casting out uh, and the drops really important because the spoon is going to while it sinks in the water it's gonna flutter down kinda of think like a leaf uh, falling out of a tree um, and it's gonna just slowly move side to side as it sinks and it takes a little bit for it to sink um, so what you do is once the spoon hits the water tighten up your slack and then uh, watch your line because uh, you may get bit just keep keep your line taut and just let it sink I usually let it sink to the bottom if I know what's down there 
and then I'll start my retrieve, and boom, look at that, fish is on. So that fish probably followed it all the way down to the bottom and grabbed it, and as soon as I started reeling, he was already on there. All right, guys, here are some of my, uh, my top picks or top producers I've had since I started fishing with RHA. Uh, these spoons have all caught me trout consistently. Um, I have a bunch of other ones. I honestly just haven't got to them yet. Uh, <laughs> um, and also, uh, it isn't trout season, so there hasn't been conditions to throw them necessarily, but uh, all of these have worked excellent for me. Uh, this one's the Fire Locust. Uh, this is Bleeding Toad Slayer, Necromancer, uh, Watermelon Juice, Mango Minnow, Lightning Trout, Morning Glory, and Mango. And then my, my top, top, top producer, like never go anywhere without it, is the Jawbreaker. Um... And either in three or four gram, all these lures, uh, I get a lot of questions like, should I get the three or the four gram or should I get the, the brass or the chrome uh, spoon? And honestly, I catch on both. Like, see, this one's a chrome and that one's brass. Um, the only difference I really see with the three or the four gram, the four gram is obviously a hair bigger. Um, just use it if you got to cast it a little further. If it gets a little bit windy, go to a four gram maybe. Um but uh, from what I've seen, they all work equally regardless of size and regardless of if it's a, a chrome or a, uh, or a brass. Look, see, here's a brass one. Because um, I, I honestly, I don't look at the back to see what metal it's made out of. I look at the, uh, the top. I want to see the paint and the design on it. And that's how I make my decision as far as what I'm going to, uh, to start throwing. Uh, also, you'll notice uh, I have added little tiny barrel swivels. Um, that's just something I do maybe because of my OCD. Um, but these are number 12 barrel swivels with, uh, number zero, uh, split ring. And I just add these to them. You don't have to, the lures work fine without them. Um, I've caught plenty with them and caught plenty without the barrel swivel. Um, I've just, uh, believe that, uh, it allows the hook to rotate a little bit more when you're fighting the fish so sometimes if the fish jumps it may help keep the hook in the mouth um but uh, i've had plenty of fish jump without the barrel swivel and i still was able to land the fish uh, additionally the uh barrel swivel makes this a little bit longer so i think it gives it a hair more action so sometimes i do that but i have plenty of my uh, rha spoons i fish i don't have barrel swivels on so completely up to you um, they don't come with barrel swivels. They're ready to fish out of the package and, and they work great without them. I, I only recently had, had started trying the barrel swivels. So, uh, jury's still out if it really makes a difference, but, uh, they work fine either way. All right, ladies and gents, there you have it. That is, uh, everything I've learned in the past few months about spoon fishing. Um, if you want to get some, uh, some of your own RHA spoons, I'll put the, uh, website to the online store right here. Uh, Luke uh, lives up in the Bay Area. Uh, he uh, hand paints all these lures. So they're all hand painted and they're very reasonable for, for actually the little works of art really. I mean, uh, cause he hand paints every one of them. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a good lure for the price and I think you're getting a lot of uh, bang for your buck out of it. Uh, Luke has a lot of passion for the fishing game and the fishing community. Um, and he just wants to get us all on more fish. So, uh, so uh, check out his site, and uh, if you like some, get some of those spoons. Uh, if you have any other uh, questions for me or comments, always leave them. I love answering them. Uh, check me out on my Instagram or uh, message me on my Instagram too. And uh, uh, until next time, tight lines. Uh -huh.